It really is an honor for us to be here. Um, Frank and I both attended UCLA undergrad. Okay. Yeah, I want to. Frank's there making you. sure our. We, we, have, we put up. a PowerPoint presentation together. <laughs> so uh, we both attended UCLA undergrad. Um, we both graduated in 1990. I studied double E. Frank was CS and E. Um, we never met once while we were at UCLA, though. Um, when we graduated, we both got jobs with large companies. I took a job with Western Digital, and Frank uh, started working for Rockwell. But we had a mutual friend, uh, a guy named Alan Adham, also a UCLA uh, graduate, who convinced both of us to quit our jobs and join him in a new startup company, creating computer games. The day Frank and I first met was the first day of Blizzard Entertainment, um, then called Silicon and Synapse, back in February of 1991. While we were at UCLA, um, we knew about the internet. It existed. But for the most part, we didn't really need it. Um, we hardly used it for anything. If I wanted to access the school computers from off campus, I just connect directly with my 9600 baud modem and use X modem to transfer data back and forth. Frank didn't do that. In fact, he didn't even own a computer back then. I did have an Apple II. Did you have a modem? I didn't have a modem. So there was no World Wide Web. Cell phones were rare. And CDs were used only for music. Email was available, but there was no one to email outside of school since no one had an email address. Lecture notes were available, but they were hard copies of someone else's notes, often not even typed. Discussion groups were always in person. And if you wanted to record a lecture, you did it on cassette tape because there were no MP3 players. These were the dark ages that we lived in. <laughs> we had no idea how dramatically the internet would impact our lives and the way that we interact with each other. How do we, how do we advance the slideshow? Maybe one of these buttons. There nope. You go. Yes. OK, cool. So looking back, Blizzard's success has clearly ridden on the seemingly unstoppable wave of the internet. Between each of our game releases, internet technology and infrastructure continued to involve, evolve. With the help of Moore's Law, we've seen increased processing power, larger capacity data storage, and higher bandwidth connectivity becoming accessible to more and more people around the world. These factors continuously opened new doors for us as game developers. And the result was not only the ability for us to create more advanced gameplay, but something possibly even more important, and our topic for the rest of this talk, the ability to reach more players around the world, provide them with an increasingly social experience, and ultimately be part of an evolving definition of community. Um, our concept of community has evolved dramatically and quickly in recent years. For the vast majority of human history, people could not communicate with each other in real time unless they were in the same place at the same time. Thus, community and communication were greatly restricted by the speed and distance of physical travel. There have been so many advances in travel and communication technology in modern history contributing to this evolution and making the world accessible to so many more people. From the perspective of a game developer, internet technology is certainly one of the more notable and significant advances in, both ter in terms of both the impact and the speed at which our world has been opened to us. Our first original PC game was Warcraft Orcs and Humans. Warcraft supported head-to-head -head play via modem and LAN but we really weren't thinking about how the internet would affect multiplayer gaming back then. That's because very, very few people were using the internet yet. The game was successful enough that we immediately began working on a sequel. So Warcraft 2, uh, we increased the maximum number of players supported in a single match to eight. Uh, this allowed gamers to play cooperatively in teams, as well as competitively against each other. Um, as an organization, we were definitely devoting mindshare to increasing the social element of the experience, but we still hadn't contemplated internet play. But fortunately, there was an independent duo of, in, of, duo of engineers. They were passionate about gaming and leveraging the internet for multiplayer. 
1995, these engineers created a LAN emulator for the internet called Kali. Now, Warcraft 2 was not initially compatible with Kali due to internet latency. Um, so we actually made a decision to update the game to work with Kali. And this was really the beginning of Blizzard support for an internet gaming community. Now, during this same time period, with broader use of the World Wide Web, passionate fans also began creating f websites focused on Warcraft 2 strategies. And these sites were also a medium for fans to connect with each other and were an important com component in the emergence of the Blizzard community. This was a turning point in Blizzard's history, as well as our entire industry. With gamers able to play each other over vast distances, these same people able to discuss their passion with thousands of others, we started to see the internet's potential impact on entertainment and communities. Seeing how the internet improved players' experience with Warcraft 2, we sought to integrate the experience more deeply and intuitively into our games. So with the release of Diablo, we launched the first version of Battle.net. This was our integrated platform for matchmaking and allowed players to connect and play with each other over the internet with a single click and to communicate with each other via text and chat rooms. We also implemented a section of our Battle.net website on which players could post comments and message with each other. Though the initial feature set for Battle.net was very simple and limited, the platform unified the people playing the game and was the foundation for a community that would grow around our games. Uh, StarCraft is a really exciting story for us because this was the game that helped us make the transition to a truly global community of gamers. Even though StarCraft wasn't translated into Korean, it was well received in South Korea and became popular in their internet cafes. It wasn't long before passionate players began playing the game competitively at a professional level. Leagues and tournaments formed for the pro players and StarCraft matches were broadcast on television. Many skilled players from other countries moved to South Korea to compete professionally. Battle.net and StarCraft had become a platform for a global community that formed around the new idea of esports. Today, there are still television networks in Korea dedicated to broadcasting StarCraft matches around the clock. With StarCraft, we could see that the internet had helped us overcome not only huge distances, but transcended culture and language with our games as well. While Diablo 2 wasn't a massively multiplayer game, it was a big step for us towards creating a massively multiplayer community. Diablo 2 allowed eight players to venture together in an instant version of the Diablo world. Character data was persistent and stored on our Battle.net servers, allowing people to play from anywhere on the internet and continue the game where they left off. By storing char players' character data and progress on a centralized database, we started building the foundation for creating a virtual world. With Warcraft 3, we continued to build on the community aspect of Battle.net. We leveraged our website with features like updated forum software, avatars with your posts, published rankings, and the results from regularly hosted automated tournaments. Warcraft 3 was also a great leap forward for the players themselves to leverage the internet to shape their own gaming experience. We included a powerful campaign editor with the game which was embraced by the community to create user-generated content like maps, missions, and even new game types. Fan sites sprung up that allowed players to share their maps with each other. Some of the most visited fan sites hosted millions of downloads. For us, this was really an indication of how large the Warcraft community had grown. Today, more than seven years after the original release, some of the most popular maps on Battle.net were created by members of the community. These maps are continually improving in quality because the gamers maintaining them have a direct connection with the community of people playing them. The internet became a distribution channel for user-generated content benefiting both the creators and the players. With all the lessons we learned from our previous games, we felt like we were ready to take a stab at our first true virtual world. Hopefully many of you have heard of World of Warcraft. 
which is our massively multiplayer online role-playing game set in the Warcraft universe. It was the first Blizzard game to require an internet connection. There is no way to play World of Warcraft offline. For us, World of Warcraft was a big lesson in scale. After five years, the game has more than 11 million active players and is localized into 10 languages. I mentioned before that Blizzard originally started out with three, player, with three uh, people back in 1991. It turns out the size of the company has kept pace with Moore's Law as well. Thanks to the popularity of internet games and World of Warcraft in particular, we now employ over 4,000 4, people around the world, with 2,500 of those specifically dedicated to customer service. In addition to supporting the infrastructure, continuing to expand the game world and handling customer service issues, we've invested a tremendous amount of effort cultivating our, uh, our community. We have a dedicated community team who interacts with our players on our community site. In addition to keeping players informed, they also make sure developers always know what our players are saying online, giving players a direct line back to development. One of the main appeals of a game like World of Warcraft is that it is an extremely social experience. Players can meet online with real-world friends or make new friends they may never see face to face. But these friendships can be just as real. Virtual friendship can transcend age, race, gender, religion, and many other perceived social boundaries. Through game structure, we encourage players to join a guild connecting them with other players of similar interests and play styles. Each guild has its own hierarchy with leaders, followers, and organizers. According to a study by IBM in 2007, massively multiplayer, on, massively multiplayer online role-playing gamers learn valuable skills that can be leveraged in the business world, like collaboration, self-organization, openness, influence, how to, how to earn incentives linked to performance, and how to be flexible in the ways they communicate. So at Blizzard, we place a really high value on our community. Uh, we have a new version of Battle.net slated to launch in conjunction with the release of StarCraft II, and many of the features will be focused on maintaining social relationships between our players. We'll also integrate our World of Warcraft players into the Battle.net experience, so that we have a unified Blizzard community. StarCraft II will require an internet connection, which is unusual for an unusual requirement for a game of this type, but we plan to have a, an always connected experience for our gamers. And this really has a dual meaning. Um, players will always be connected to the internet, but they will also always be connected to their friends within the Blizzard community, regardless of what activities they are participating in. Our objective is to integrate our games even more deeply with the internet because it's our platform to, in, to connect and engage the community. In the future, we expect games to become an even more social experience. Players will discover more powerful ways to interact with each other. And we've really only just begun to leverage the internet as a medium for gaming community. The most exciting possibilities have not even yet been conceived. Online gaming and social networking are only now scratching the surface of what might be possible in the future. The concept of community has evolved exponentially as a result of the way the internet connects people. Our games have evolved over the years. As our games have evolved over the years, we have leveraged advances in the inter internet to comp create more compelling social entertainment experiences. For the past 15 years, players have used the internet to find someone to play a game with across cities, states, or even countries. Today, we're proud to see that that's come full circle. Thanks to the internet, we've been able to create true communities around our games, allowing players to create relationships that literally bring them together. Every year, Blizzard hosts a convention called BlizzCon for our players who travel from across the country and in many cases from around the world. This past year's BlizzCon drew over 27,000 attendees, with another 70,000 watching a live stream of the event via satellite and over the internet. 
Back when Frank Allen and I founded Blizzard in 1991, we just wanted to make great games. We never imagined that our work would touch so many people's lives and that the internet would help us reach a global audience and create a global community. We're excited to see what the next 40 years will bring. Thank you. Thank you.